Hello, my name is Daniel Dancer and I live in Mosier, Oregon. And what I do is try to change people's relationship with the sky by creating giant living paintings made of people that only make sense from way up there. Well, what I do is go into a school and do an artist in residency program, usually lasts three or four days, and it culminates in a giant living painting made of the kids and lots of other materials, like in the case of the Blue Jay. We had 150 pairs of jeans, we had two shades of mulch and some sand, and parents and kids all worked together to create this image of the Blue Jay, and then they got into it with their bodies in colors of white, black, and blue, and completed the image. We need a white, another white class. Keep them coming. These guys can be a blue line, this blue line right here. Let's take these white ones and put them up at the top by the head. You want to organize those up in here? Yeah, you can organize them right in here. Each project is a giant collaborative event where everybody comes together, very close together, and is doing something, and they've seen other images, so they know that it probably looks pretty amazing from the sky, but there's something that comes that happens when everybody comes together. There's a few moments when, they, when something coalesces, and there's this tremendous amount of joy that's released by participating with so many people together on one thing. It's a cultural act of magnificence, this creation of something really beautiful that never existed before, and it's only going to last for a few moments. It just releases this kind of joy, and also a memory that I've been told time and time again that will last for a lifetime. I really was excited to see other people being happy too, and, um, and I was really happy that I got to like be an art project a real with a real artist. All right, Uzma, nice and loud. It was because um, I was in the art project and I have never been in there. I think it's really important for children to be involved in a whole activity that involves the entire community. Uh, 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 it, it's indicative of understanding that you are part of a, of a larger whole, that you're part of, of the whole earth and the whole idea of, of sky sight was a lovely idea for, for the children to really grow and understand that they're a part of something much bigger than themselves. And it's also community building. We had all those parents come in and toddlers and it was really a wonderful experience. Did you take a picture from up there? Was it good? Oh, very good. Very, very good. One of the teachings is interconnection. Another one of the teachings is collaboration, the power of what lots and lots of people can do when they decide to work on the same thing together. In this case, a beautiful image of a blue jay. Another one of the teachings is intention. We set our intention every time for good weather, which was a real challenge in Seattle. We had 70% chance of rain every day, and it turned out beautiful, and even the sun came out on, on the, as soon as we were finished with the project. Another of the teachings is gratitude. Each project is a great big thank you to the earth and sky for all the blessings we get every single day being alive on this planet. Another teaching is impermanence. You know, it's only perfect for maybe 15 minutes and then it's gone forever. It's only a memory. Nothing tangible remains on the field. Once everybody leaves and all the materials are raked up, it's a real lesson in impermanence, which I think is, um, really important to embrace if we want to have a happy life on this planet, that everything's temporary, everything's always moving. And, uh, you know, it's a big Buddhist teaching. I wish I would have learned it when I was young because uh, I think it's critical to having a happy life. I just kind of stumbled into Art for the Sky by, I ran into a kid that was a bead in an Art for the Sky project 25 years ago when I worked with 
a crop artist named Stan Hurd, and he had made this Indian head that was 25 acres in size. And I brought a school out to dress in red and blue and be beads on the Indian's headband. It was an amazing, beautiful image. Um, and I ran into one of these kids, you know, 25 years later when I was visiting back in Kansas. And he came up to me and thanked me and told me it was the only thing he remembered from school. And it was probably the most important thing he did because it helped him understand the big picture that things don't make sense when you're too close, that you got to step back and get a different view. And so his, his comments, um, the proverbial light bulb went off when I heard that. And, and uh, I was looking for, at the time, a way to make a living because some other things weren't working. So that's what set me on my current course of doing this work. And it's, you know, it's grown and grown and I do about 15 or 20 projects a year. And all these images, these aerial art images that don't make any sense on the ground, I think they create this opportunity, this field for us to take better care of the planet, to apologize for what we've done up to this point, to begin to develop a new way of seeing the world, to set a new course for taking care of the climate. You know, we've been treating the sky, the climate, like, you know, like it's a sewer, just dumping everything into it without regard, and now it's coming back to haunt us. So this is a way to sort of end the old and begin the new. So it's, it's art for the new paradigm, I think, at least in my own thinking about it.